Yeah, I'm not actually holding the level editor sign, but it's still true. I made a will you snail level editor because you kept asking for it. I just couldn't say no at that point. If you know what I mean. The level editor is still work in progress, but you can actually try it out right now. I'm gonna tell you how at the end of the video. For now, this devlog is of course about how I made the level editor. Starting a new feature is always a little rough. It's a little overwhelming. You don't even really know what to start with. Now that I successfully published Will You Snail on Steam and consoles, I have to admit I'm kind of ready to move on to new projects. In fact, the next one is already planned. It starts in six weeks. That means I have six weeks to make the full Will You Snail level editor. Uh, that sounds very realistic, especially, uh, uh, you know, with uh, YouTube and all of the other stuff going on. The six weeks actually turned into 15 days. Let's see how it went. So this is the development plan. I basically have six weeks to make the level editor. Luckily, I roughly know where I want the level editor to be already. I think the most important thing when making big features like a level editor is really very carefully taking one step at a time. I just thought, okay, let's just lay some groundwork. First of all, let's make a new area for the level editor. Okay, first test. Okay, that works. Okay. And then I did some more groundwork for like parser movement, even something as stupidly simple as that. Just figure those things out. I got this down now. Um, I have a nice little clicky animation and sound. I can use, I can move this with my mouse. Why did this take so long? You can also control it with the controller. Wow. The next baby step was adding camera movement, making sure you can zoom in, zoom out, pen left, pen right, all of those basics, one step at a time, one feature at a time. And by the end of day one, I just had some camera movement and a cursor. Okay, <laughs> still 14 days left. <laughs> Day two was more of the same, just laying down more groundwork. I added a little grid system in the background and the number is just for debugging. That one shows me how many lines are drawn in the background because I only draw the lines that are on screen to save some performance. There was roughly half of the day and then with the other half of the day, I added some nice little UI icons in the corner. Okay, they're not nice. Okay, I, I take the nice back. I added some UI buttons in the corner and later on you'll be able to click on those buttons hopefully and build stuff. Wow. Game Maker has a lot of strengths. Drawing UI elements at the moment is not necessarily one of them because you have to start the game every time to see how it looks like. So that took a while and it didn't always go as planned. Right, so problem is the pivot points are all messed up. Every object has a pivot point somewhere else. Hmm. Hey, as you can see that's not quite right. <laughs> This one is not even here. It seems like it's quite just very offset. Hmm. Damn it. Yo, now we got it all in there. <laughs> but now the cursor is behind the UI. Why is the cursor behind the UI now? I didn't even change anything. Why? <laughs> now it looks the way it's supposed to finally. Can't wait to be able to place these here. Yep. And now this doesn't count as a separate day, even though it was technically done on a different day. I just played around with making some music a bit. We host music gems on the Making Games Together Discord server, which links probably in the description somewhere if you wanna join. I tried out making some music for the level editor. It ended up sounding pretty okay. Day three, even more UI tasks. I mean, what did I expect? I'm making a level editor. Of course, it's like 90% UI tasks. <laughs> Game developers hate UI tasks because they are boring. But what I do like is uh, kind of coming up with a design for where buttons should be, how things should work and so on. I enjoy that part of UI design, but like the actual UI coding. <sighs> so basically I added a little placeholder for where I want to add the full tool selection. One thing at a time is the only way you can tackle these big features. Yeah, this is very, very cool. I feel like this works exactly as it's supposed to now. All right, we're already on day four out of 15. And do you notice anything? I'm still busy implementing like very basic UI stuff. What's really cool is there's already an outline for the selected one. That's epic. Oh, these should only show up in this tab though. Yeah, that's how it goes. You can't build anything yet. You can't play anything yet. We're just making buttons. <laughs> we're just making buttons. We're setting up hotkeys for buttons. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's kind of rewarding. Actually, I don't think I've seen a 
level editor that f feels so satisfying, but maybe that's just because I made it, I'm not sure. Roughly a third of my time gone, we're still implementing very basic UI things. Oh man. I swapped out the music now, so I'm very curious how that will feel. Okay, all of the selection stuff seems to be working as intended now, and the music is actually growing on me quite a bit as well. I really like the music. Maybe I'll keep it. I've started implementing a bo um, like a box you can drag here. Unfortunately, it still shows up at the wrong position. Aha, nice. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. You can drag beautiful boxes now. Day five. Okay, the good news is both the left as well as the right press work now, so I can drag both creation as well as deletion boxes. The bad news is I think I got the sound effects confused. <laughs> that's not the correct sound effect, but other than that it works. There are plenty of little details you need to take care of. Things you don't even think about, I think, when using a level editor like this. Like making sure you can cancel out of dragging a box or something. You, you gotta take care of all of these things. And I'm taking all of these things one step at a time. So whenever I make a little tiny feature like being able to drag a box, I'm then like, okay, what else do I need to do with this? What other systems does this need to interact with? While you're dragging a square like this, if you hit escape, what happened before is the pause menu opens, but what happens now? While dragging a square, if you hit escape, it just cancels out. And then if you hit escape again, you enter the pause menu. And then in the second half of the day, you won't believe it. We're finally starting to build stuff. We're finally spawning something into the level. It's about time. <laughs> the first test. <laughs> oh no, nothing happens. <laughs> what? Okay, something's still not quite right. What? Please fill the square. Oh my god. <laughs> nice. Okay, great news, it works. Uh, I can drag beautiful boxes now. And then what's even more satisfying is like dragging spikes on these. It's every everything's like so fast. I'm really happy with that workflow. Like <laughs> honestly, I wish I, I would have had this while making the main game cause holy hell, I think creating levels with this will be so freaking fast. There are still so many features missing at this point. You can't even play the levels you built yet. Uh, like there, there's just so much stuff missing. It's just crazy. So let's just see how it goes from here. We got 10 days left. Day six of making a level editor. <laughs> here you can see my to-do list every time I find a bug or something I wanna do. I just write it down and that way I don't forget about it. This is the only thing left to do. Expand and shrink level boilers. Let's get into it. There we go. The entire sixth day was just spent on solving one single problem and that was the wall tiling. Like in Will You Snail, the wall blocks all have like different sizes and are like puzzled together in like a really weird, nice way. Doing that manually is very annoying. So I wanted to automate that for the level editor to make it like easy and fun to use as I possibly could. I basically made it so that whenever you drag a box for a wall, it just creates a box of that size instead of lots of tiny ones and basically the plan is I'll just whenever you place one of these boxes I'll split that box so many times till all of the individual pieces are large enough and then later on we'll have to figure out what happens for example when you delete a corner of a block or something I don't want the entire block to be deleted I just want this corner of the block to be deleted so uh, I'll figure it out let's get into it I expected to see way worse, so I'm actually happy with that. Great job to me, let's move on to the next day. <laughs> Okay, this is day seven and my first deed of the day is that I coded a new placement behavior for like objects there can only be one of. So instead of dragging a box, it only drags like uh, this one by one. And then as soon as you place a new one, it also deletes the old one. Day seven, more or less half time. So great opportunity to evaluate what I managed to do so far. I thought I had quite a bit of time left, but yeah, it was half time. If I remember correctly on day seven, I did a bunch of small stuff. I fought with the doors. Mm, what is that? What the f is this? Okay, that's progress. Ouch! Why would you destroy all of my hopes and dreams? Okay, great news. Uh, I think the doors work now. For example, I can 
Place a door here now. Take that stupid doors! They just, just didn't want to display correctly, but I eventually managed to tame them. Then I played around with the previews a bit, polished those previews a little further, like the building previews, because I could already hear people complaining about those not looking right if I didn't do that. And then in the second half of the day, I did some more UI coding for the property inspector, or however you want to call that in my editor. The good news is we're making decent progress on a lot of the important groundwork. The bad news is there are still a lot to do like there are some still some massive features missing for example the safe load system i haven't touched that yet then the other thing is you can't play the game yet that's another big thing it's gonna cost me a lot more time later on plus a bunch of other stuff i want to do so we'll see how it goes Day eight, can I get you excited for some ui coding let's do the ui coding excited dance You can see the relatively painful process of trying to design this UI without having a proper UI editor, which hopefully they'll add soon to Game Maker. Please, please, please. Wow. Ta da! Yeah. I felt a little stressed, so I made a new plan. Here it is. Wow. This is. Yeah, feel less stressed already. Make plans to reduce stress. It works. Day 9 is another interesting one because I basically didn't get a lot done, but at the same time I kind of did. I just made a couple of properties work. So for example, the block placement, the block size property, and then also the offset property. That doesn't sound like a lot, but it basically occupied me for the entire day. Okay, so now you can switch back and forth, but it's not quite working as I wanted to. I only wanted to switch once, please. Even if you have some less productive days or if you don't make a super insane amount of progress every day, if you just make some progress every day, you can still build those really big features in not that much time. All right, day 10, and we still have not addressed the two most important features that are still missing, the safe load system and actually being able to play the levels you build. That made me a little nervous. Two thirds of my time gone, big yikes. Other than that, day 10 was fairly productive. I added AI triggers. So whenever the player enters these, you can change the spawning properties of the AI. So these will be invisible for the player, but in the level editor, you can use them to, whenever you enter them, the behavior of the AI will change. And I basically managed to make the entire property picker tool. You can see the properties now already in this view over here, which makes this way nicer to navigate and read. So now you can see on first glance, okay, I have, don't have to worry about this entire block because these settings are all disabled or if you disable this right here, you can see it change up here right away. All right, check this out. I added a little bit of a wobbly thing to whatever you're hovering over. That looks very cool. Very satisfying to just hover over things now. All in all, successful day, but only five days left. Uh-oh. All right, we're already almost halfway through the day and I finally got the first part of the picker tool working correctly. So for example, right, let's say I create an un corrupted antenna over here and I flip it upside down and you know, then I change it back, flip it back. Then I can now copy the properties of this stone here by picking the property picker, right clicking. And now I basically am back to these settings. And of course, this makes a lot more sense for giant objects like this. If I forgot which properties I set for this objects, I can pick them here and then I can see exactly what I set them to. And then of course, I'll be able to change them and paste them back in if I want. So this will be come in very handy. Now we're really starting to run short on time. It's day 11 and you still can't play the game and you still can't save and load the game. Instead, I fought with weird little bugs all day long let's copy this and paste it here now the spike rotates but as you can see it's still bugged because the spike kind of gets an odd offset from this this should not be the case i did some polishing for the property picker tool which was nice and then i fought with some more bugs <laughs> oh god i don't know what i did but something's going horribly wrong <laughs> why is it being sucked into the corner now and when i paste it uh, everything about this is wrong. And that was the day. <laughs> that was the day. So the entire day 12 was spent on implementing a <coughs> wiring system. Yeah. Okay, I got the visuals for the wiring tool up and running. You can now select this wiring tool and use it to 
yep, connect certain objects. And for the most part it works pretty well already. It doesn't do anything yet, it just shows the preview. So you can select objects and start dragging lines to other objects you can wire to. And obviously not every object is wireable. For example, these blocks down there aren't. Now let's see what happens if I release here. Ah. So I can connect it, I can disconnect it. I can... Can I get rid of two connections at once by right clicking this? Yes, okay. All right, all right. Actually, my plan for the level editor prototype was sort of to figure out all of the difficult systems that I can't outsource. And honestly, my plan is to just hand the level editor to somebody else and be like, uh, here, here you go, keep developing it for me. So that's why I'm taking care of all of the important systems right now. And unfortunately, the wiring system is very much part of that. I don't want anybody else to handle that. I wanna be in control of how that works and how it works under the hood and so on. So I just spent day 12 on making a wiring system. Why not? This is what I already did today. I haven't tested it yet and this should be able to save and load the current tool properties. Day 13 and I finally started on the save load system. All right, I'm gonna set some weird settings on this one here. For example, look ahead time of 250 and now if I press F1 I should get this beautiful error message that's exactly going according to plan. I have the feeling it's gonna crash a few more times before it's gonna work. Let's try it again and I'll hit F1 for saving. Uh, oh, never mind this was to be expected. Okay let's hit F1. Oh nice you can even see a saving pop up there for a very small moment. And now let's leave this and come back. Now this is back to 60 and now I'll hit F2 to load. Oh, and it loaded correctly. Uh, that's a good first step. So this is how it looks like so far. That's basically the insides of the save file. And so far we have the game version saved up here and then we have a bunch of tool properties saved here and look, it looks like, whoa, looks very confusing. <laughs> so let's do F1 for saving, then delete everything. Uh, just write maybe hi or something. And then load with F2. <laughs> To my surprise, I managed to do it a lot faster than expected. I think there are several reasons for this. For once, I already gathered a lot of experience on how to do save load systems because I've done it a couple of times in Game Maker for Will You Snail. The only thing I didn't quite manage to get working was entering play mode, or I guess I partially got that working, but there was definitely more work to be done on that front. What's interesting to note about entering play mode is basically it's just a different way of loading the level. So basically I have two different load functions. I have one save function. The save function writes the entire level into a text file. The load function loads the level from a text file and the play function also loads the level from a text file it just places different objects that looks correct it is correct so I only had a very short amount of time on this day. What I did is I set myself a 90 minute timer and was like, okay, let's see what I managed to get done in 90 minutes and actually just try to win super focused, super try hard. You're wondering about the color scheme. That's because I just implemented two new community made color schemes. They look pretty nice. I have this one by Imudred and this one by Radiance. Let's see, how does the level editor look? Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Now I hit F1 to save. So now let's see if play mode works. No, play mode does not work. <laughs> nothing spawned, no. Why is nothing happening, why? The thing happened, there always happens, some weird bug occurred and I basically spent my entire time on just fixing one bug. Please, it has to work now. 45 minutes gone, 45 minutes to go. And why? Please work now, please. Oh my god. What happens if I restart? Very nice. You found the self-destruct button. Oh my god, yes. Yes. For 90 minutes, I think I made decent progress on day 14. So I'm happy with the result. I think I managed to get play mode working. You could finally, for the first time, build and actually play what you've built. So that was fantastic. It's a real level editor now. <laughs>
Day 15! Yeah, baby! The final day was all in the name of just making stuff work. This should now actually be corrupted when we enter play mode and this door here should have the correct size, which was not the case before, so let's give it a go. Ah, a classic. And play. Okay, don't worry about that circle down there. So basically it works, right? The doors have the correct f me. <laughs> accidentally left the level yeah but it worked it worked and now as soon as i cross through this gate here spikes should start spawning on the ground i spawn something different <laughs> oh that's a lot of fireworks now it's gonna work i can feel it got spikes yeah <laughs> Oh my god, you can spawn so many lasers if you want. All right, I told you you can try out the level editor right now and that was not a lie. You just gotta listen how because it's not super straightforward. It's not a finished feature. It's still like an alpha. It hasn't been translated yet. There might still be bugs. There might be very bad bugs that maybe, I don't know, do bad stuff to your save files or crash your computer or whatever. But if you still want to try it out, all you gotta do is right click the game in your library, click on properties, click on betas and then select the level editor beta so you can try it out right now and i'm very curious to hear your feedback let me know in the comments below what you think i'm also super excited to see your levels and so on cheers